The next talk is about zero correlation attacks on tweakable block ciphers with linear tweaky expansion, authored by Ralph Ankele, Christoph Dobronik, Jean Guo, Iran Lambui, Gregor Leander, and Yosuke Toto. And Ralph is going to give the talk. Thanks for the introduction. <clears throat> so this is on zero correlation attacks uh, of tweakable block ciphers uh, with linear tweak uh, expansion. And uh, let me start uh, with a quick um, uh, introduction. Uh, so tweakable block ciphers, uh, as we all know, uh, compared to uh, normal regular block ciphers add an additional tweak value. And uh, the tweak value doesn't have to be secure, so it's um, a public available value, um, but it also uh, gives an attacker then, uh, the freedom to, to choose the value and uh, use it in an attack. And the goal is to um, move the randomization from protocol level uh, to block server level uh, using this tweak. So, um, how can we construct tweakable block ciphers? Uh, so, we can construct tweakable block ciphers by using modes, for example, ESGCM. Uh, but there are also some dedicated tweakable block ciphers like Skinny, Mantis, Karma, and Doc, Deoxys. And most of them are built uh, with this uh, tweak key framework introduced uh, in 2014. And <coughs> uh, basically, it's um, uh, key alternating uh, block cipher uh, like this down there. But um, we also have a, a tweak schedule where we uh, update the tweaks. Um, so uh, our contributions, uh, so we analyze uh, several uh, tweakable block ciphers. Um, for Karma and Mantis, uh, we count, the, instead of counting the rounds, we uh, count the number of uh, S-boxes that we can attack. So um, we have an attack uh, for Karma for uh, 12 uh, S-box applications, um, for Mantis uh, also for 12. And for Skinny, uh, we can uh, attack 20 rounds for Skinny 64, 128. And for Skinny 64, 192, we can attack 23 rounds. <clears throat> and for example, it's also interesting um, that comparing it to uh, impossible differential attacks, where the, the bigger attack uh, actually uh, improves about uh, impossible differential attacks. So uh, this is my... Uh, overview of the talk, so I will give some preliminaries, then I will add, explain the zero correlation attacks on tweakable block ciphers, and then I will uh, show some applications to Karma, Mantis, and Skinny. So <clears throat> um, first a short uh, reminder about how uh, differences in linear masks are propagated uh, in, a uh, in a cipher, so over an XOR, uh, the differences uh, A and B uh, just uh, sum up, but uh, an interesting part for tweakable block ciphers is when uh, the differences are the same because then they cancel out. Over a um, branching point, uh, they are the same, and over an S-box, we just can compute the uh, differential distribution table, and then it holds uh, with a certain probability. And for linear masks, it's slightly different. So over an XOR, the uh, masks are the same. Over a branching point, um, they uh, again <coughs> uh, sum, up, sum up, and over an uh, S-box, we can con uh, compute the linear distribution table. <clears throat> so when we ev uh, evaluate the security of tweakable block ciphers, um, for differential cryptanalysis, um, what we can do is basically we can add a difference in the tweak, tweak and the difference in the state, and then we can cancel the difference in the first round, if they are the same, and basically we get uh, one round for free. Um, if we look at the same thing uh, in linear cryptanalysis, <clears throat> it was shown in FSE 2017 that the tweak doesn't introduce new linear characteristics, so that trick doesn't work. But what was also hinted in that paper already was that the tweak uh, adds additional restrictions which can then be used in zero correlation attacks. <clears throat> So zero correlation attacks uh, were first introduced by Bogdanov and Ryman, and basically it says that uh, for two given uh, masks, uh, alpha and beta, it exploits a uh, correlation of exactly zero. Um, one of the drawbacks uh, of zero correlation attacks is that it normally requires a huge data complexity. And what we can see down there is uh, basically the uh, zero correlation attack on 4 AS. So what we do is uh, we have some 
uh, active masks in the in the beginning. We go with uh, probability one. We do the same from from the bottom, uh, and we see that uh, it doesn't match in the middle, and uh, it has a zero correlation. Um, so then, uh, how can we do that for tweakable block ciphers? <clears throat> so for tweakable block ciphers, uh, let's start with a very basic uh, two-round tweakable block cipher. So what we uh, can do again, so over the first XOR, the um, masks have to be the same. And also uh, from, from, the, from the other side. And uh, when we then shift uh, the masks into the, into the tweak key schedule, we see that uh, all the branching points, they all have to sum up. And uh, yeah, they, they just uh, give some additional restrictions in, in the uh, tweak key schedule. And uh, what we do in our attacks, uh, we also link the serial correlation attacks later to integral attacks to reduce the data complexity. Um, so uh, in our attack, we basically uh, take a lot of ciphers uh, from the tweak key framework. So the tweak key framework is uh, the rationale was to uh, treat the tweak and the key the same way. Therefore, it's called tweak key. Um, it's basically completely linear, um, and it generalizes the class of key alternating ciphers. And it's a framework that uh, can be used to design tweakable block ciphers. Um, <clears throat> some uh, instantiation of that is the SDK construction. So instead of uh, just one uh, line with the tweak key, you can have uh, several tweak key lines. And um, so the it uses a state update function h, which is uh, a permutation, which is applied to each of the tweak keywords. And further, there is uh, also a, a multipli uh, multiplication that is different for each tweak keyword. And um, then we have a sub tweak key extraction function g, which uh, just XORs the tweak keywords together. And there are also some uh, runt dependent constants added uh, for slide attacks. And uh, the G function basically reduces many tweak keywords to one. And the overall goal was to reduce the implementation overhead and also to simplify the security analysis. Um, so let me shortly introduce a, a small toy cipher uh, to explain the text better. So the run function is the same as AS. So it just has add key, then uh, Sbox application, then shift rows and then a mixed column application. And for the um, tweak schedule, we simply just use the permutation of Skinny and uh, nothing else. And also compared to Skinny, we extract the, the whole uh, key and not just the first two rows. So if we uh, look now on serial correlation attacks uh, of the SDK construction with uh, just one tweak keyword, <clears throat> what we can do is uh, we fix uh, an input mask and an output mask and then we can uh, compute uh, something what we call the gamma sequence, which is uh, just uh, the mask in the uh, tweak schedule. And um, we do that by forward and backward propagation uh, of the input mask and output mask with probability one. And what we can observe then is if we have uh, um, at least uh, one, or at most one uh, linear active value in this um, this mask in this uh, sequence, and to fix the, uh, the tweak mask also to zero, we get a zero correlation. Um, how does this look like? So in, in our toy cipher that I uh, showed previously, so <clears throat> compared to the four round attack on AS, if we have uh, um, the same round function, but uh, now with a tweak schedule and um, we, we do that attack, we can get a five round attack. And basically, we shift the uh, property of the serial correlation from the state into the tweak uh, schedule. And what we can see is that uh, on the left, here, on the right here, um, there is uh, just one active value, and all of the other ones are zero. And if we force the tweak mask to be zero, then um, we get a serial correlation. Um, if we want to apply that uh, to some ciphers with uh, more tweak key lines, um, we can basically do a similar thing. Um, what we do is we just have to compute the gamma sequence for all of all of these uh, tweak key lines, 
and um, then uh, we get a zero coil. We again fix the, the input and output masks. We cal calculate everything, and um, then we can uh, obtain a zero correlation when at most p linear uh, active uh, values are in there, and the p is the number of uh, of lines we have in the wiki. So if it's tk two, then we have two active and and so. Um, so how does that look uh, again on our toy cipher? Um, so we have now uh, two tweak key lines, and uh, we can have uh, two um, active values in there, and uh, we can uh, extend the attack to a six round attack. So um, our first application then is Karma, um, as it was already uh, introduced before. So Karma uh, looks like this. Um, uh, it's a tweakable block cipher based on the Twiki framework. It's a refraction-like cipher. Um, so the the, um, the middle part is um, this reflector. It has uh, some extra runs in there that are just keyed, but not uh, the tweak is added. And then it uh, just iterates the, the same run functions uh, in, in the beginning and to the front. And um, <laughs> So it uses a very lightweight uh, involuntary 4-bit S-box. Um, it uses the cell permutation of Midori. Um, the mixed column uh, matrix uh, look like this. So um, it's basically a circulant uh, matrix that's just repeated. And um, the tweak is schedule um, consists of a permutation H and the bit-based LSFR. Um, so if we uh, construct a distinguisher for, for karma, um, what we can see, so we basically um, just I uh, fix some input masks and an output mask. We iterate that, uh, uh, as many rounds as we can get. And then we look in the tweak uh, uh, schedule. And what we can see is um, there's uh, just one active uh, value in here. And uh, yeah, we um, can then, uh, what we do is, uh, we later translate uh, this uh, serial correlation uh, distinguisher to an integral distinguisher to uh, reduce the data complexity and uh, also move it then to a uh, related to key attack. Um, in our key recovery, we basically can uh, prepend one round and uh, append uh, three rounds. And what we can see is that uh, in the round after uh, the distinguisher, we have uh, two balanced uh, bytes. And uh, we then use, uh, so uh, we prepend uh, one round and that three rounds. Uh, we have uh, this x0 and x8 uh, balanced at the same time. And uh, to calculate uh, uh, both values, um, we use the mid in the middle technique for integral attacks. So we can evaluate uh, the values independently. And uh, for the attack, we use the FFT key recovery uh, technique, and um, the time complexity is then uh, about 2 to the 66, where we recover uh, 56 bits of the, the outer keys and um, um, 28 bits of the, of the inner key. Um, the data complexity sums then up to uh, 2 to the 48.4, and the memory complexity is uh, 2 to the 53. Um, so for more details, please uh, check in the paper. Um, so then uh, we also applied uh, the same attack uh, for Mantis. Uh, Mantis is uh, quite similar to Karma. It's uh, also a tweakable block cipher based on the Twiki framework, and it uses it's a reflection cipher. Um, so uh, as a comparison between Mantis and Karma, so the run function uh, looks slightly different. So the S-box in Mantis is applied uh, first, and then there's uh, the keys added. And for Karma, uh, the key is added first, and the S-box is uh, at the <coughs> end. And also the S-boxes are, are different, and the linear uh, layers are uh, different, but uh, they have the same structure. And because our deck is uh, generic enough, so it doesn't uh, exploit the S-box, we can uh, re-iterate uh, the, the round function and basically uh, apply the same attack. So the same attack that uh, holds for Karma is then also valid for Mantis. Um, then let me show the attack uh, to Skinny. So Skinny is <coughs> uh, also a tweaker browser from the Twiki framework. 
Um, it's uh, similar to, uh, run functions to AS, so it has a, a SBox application. Then the tweak is added just uh, to the first two rows, so just uh, the first two rows of the tweak uh, extracted and then added to the state. Um, the shift rows uh, is similar as in, in AS, <coughs> and for the mixed columns, uh, it uses a binary uh, matrix. And in the tweak key schedule, there is uh, application of the of a permutation, and then an LFSR on the uh, top two rows. Um, again, it uses a very lightweight uh, four-bit S box. Uh, it uses AS-like shift rows, uh, but it shifts to the right instead of left. Um, and the uh, binary matrix uh, like this here is uh, applied to for mixed columns. For the tweak key schedule, the permutation uh, is used like this one here, and there is a uh, bit-based LSFR that is added to the top two uh, rows, but only in the setting for TK2 and TK3, so with just one uh, tweak key line, there is uh, no LSFR added. Um, so for attacks, so we can uh, attack 20 rounds of skinny 64 128 in the uh, TK2 setting, where we use a um, certain round uh, distinguisher, which uh, has a complexity, uh, data complexity of uh, 2 to the 56 plain text, and we use uh, 2 to the 8 related tweaks. And uh, for the larger version of uh, skinny in the TK3 setting, we use again 2 to the 56 plain text and then 2 to the 12 related tweak keys. Um, so that, that's the key recovery uh, for skinny 64 128. Um, so basically, uh, we can prepend one round and append uh, six rounds. And again, uh, the values uh, uh, set 14 in the 14th round uh, at the 11th. Uh, um, position is uh, then balanced. And what we do is uh, yeah, we uh, just uh, see how many uh, state and tweak uh, values are um, included, and then uh, we can uh, recover uh, parts of the um, key. And one interesting observation is <coughs> that uh, the FFT key recovery method is uh, not as sufficient. And the reason for that is that uh, just the two topmost rows of the tweak key added so uh, therefore, we saw that the uh, uh, partial sum technique is actually more efficient, and we can uh, get them more rounds for the attack. And uh, the data comp uh, time complexity is around 2 to the 90 97. Um, data complexity is uh, 2 to the 68. And uh, the memory complexity is 2 to the uh, 82. Um, so for the attack on uh, DK3, um, what we do is uh, we can prepend one round again, and this time append eight rounds. And uh, this time two uh, values in the state are balanced at the same time. And again, we use the meet in the middle technique for integral attacks to evaluate them independently, similar as for karma. And yeah, again, uh, the partial sum technique is more efficient than the um, FFT, key, FFT key recovery technique. And the time complexity is uh, 2 to the 155, and uh, the data complexity is 2 to the 73, and then with a memory complexity of 138. Um, so in conclusions, um, what we show is a new attack technique uh, for analyzing uh, trickable block ciphers. Um, we have currently the, current, uh, the best uh, attack for Karma uh, in comparison of number of runs or icebox applications. Um, so, an interesting thing is that uh, the attack is independent of the keyed middle runs. So, uh, if Karma would add uh, even more uh, keyed runs in the middle, uh, we could just simply ignore them. And uh, for uh, Mantis and for Skinny, we add some further insights. Thank you. So, we have a lot of time for questions. So. Yes, we have a lot of time. So first, I want to give credit to my colleagues. It's karma that looks like mantis, and not mantis like karma. <laughs> uh, second, uh, you just mentioned that the, the complexity on mantis is the same. But the, are there any optimizations that actually use the, the, the simpler linear layer or 
really it's a peer truncated approach, so the rotation do, do play a no, no role at all. Mm -hmm. um, so our attack uh, is quite uh, generic, so we don't use uh, something from the S-Box, uh, so it can't be just any 4-bit S-Box. Um, we also don't really exploit the, um, the linear layer, so uh, and the, the linear layer is basically it's basically the same <coughs> from the number of uh, ones and zeros in, in, in the um, in the matrix. So um, the attack, uh, the only thing we had to do is uh, reshuffle the, the round function, but that again uh, results in the same uh, thing. And uh, yeah, so the attack uh, just simply applies uh, the same. So just our attack, uh, is most probably other attacks uh, completely different. Any more questions? If not, I'm just uh, curious that, um, can you actually apply it to non-linear uh, tweaky scheduling, or is there any reason that you chose only the linear uh, key expansion? Um, yeah, most probably you can, uh, but uh, then the, um, the calculating of the mask is most probably a lot more difficult. So, so the issue is the only the, the complexity part. Or um, so most probably it's just how the how, how the, um, <coughs> the the gamma sequence is uh, calculated. Um, most probably it's slightly different, uh, but we haven't we haven't checked. Okay. I'm not okay. sure. Thanks. Let's thank the speaker again.